Hey, uh, coming to you today to do the next set in the uh, Battle for My Crag terrain pieces here. Uh, we've been working on this project for a few weeks and today we're going to do a little bit more painting, kind of get it to the mid stage, maybe not the final stage, but really close. So by the end of this, we'll go from this just primered, pretty much base coated uh, piece of terrain to more like a finished piece. And I'll probably do all five pieces uh, in, this, in this video so that you kind of get an idea, a sense of speed. Um, I'm not going to try to do a lot of detail, uh, but some detail just so it looks good on the tabletop. Uh, you always want it to show well, you know, because you want your terrain to look cool. Um, but you don't want to spend too much time on it because you'd rather be uh, either doing the hobby of painting your army or, and or playing games or both. And, um, you know, messing around with terrain is a good piece of what we do. Um, but, you know, uh, I want you to have a good understanding of what it's going to take to put a set like this on the table. And if you haven't caught uh, the past videos, just look toward the end or in the links. I'll put where to start at the first video for this series. And then that way you can kind of catch up if you want to watch through the process of me you know, I clipped this out. I found an old set of the Battle for Mark Craig um, from Warhammer 40K, and I, I clipped it all out. I put it on these bases, uh, you know, did some flocking and terrain, and, you know, it's just the process of getting it to this stage. Um, so I'll put that in the comment, you know, in the description of the video, plus toward the end of this video, you'll get a link to the first one so you can start back at the loop and, and get back. But um, I'm glad you're here. Uh, you know, please like the video. Please uh, subscribe <laughs> to the channel. Uh, I'm always looking for subscribers, uh, you know, to help me out and help me produce uh, more terrain uh, and painting and hobby uh, videos like this for you because I, I, I really enjoy the hobby part of, uh, you know, doing 40K or bolt action or Warhammer, the old world. I enjoy these miniature gaming and doing cool terrain so your tabletops look awesome when you go to play games. And this is just a channel that kind of helps you do that part. I mean, from time to time, I'm going to paint armies or uh, talk about the hobby or talk about games a little bit. But, you know, the heart of what we're doing is, is really, you know, getting you cool terrain on the table. Uh, uh, you can see I've been painting today. Um, but uh, I just want you to, you know, enjoy that part of the hobby, learn a few techniques so that you can make great terrain for your tabletops. And uh, like I said, I'll be doing all sorts of videos along the way. So please, like I said, like, comment, share, uh, subscribe to the channel, and that it would really help us out. Also have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. Um, anyway, uh, so stay tuned so we can see, you know, painting up this terrain and um, you know getting this on your tabletop so you can play you know great looking games with your <laughs> terrain that you built uh fairly quickly to get on the tabletop anyway thanks for watching we'll talk to you soon all right so today we're going to be working on this whole set of battle for crag terrain uh there's five total pieces this one's out just a little bit but you can see that's a broken up ship uh, for Warhammer 40K for terrain. Um, you know, you're going to need some other pieces of terrain to go on your table, but this is a good start. A few other buildings with this, and you're going to have a pretty good uh, terrain set for your table. I just want to kind of go over some of the tools we're going to use today. Of course, I have a variety of brushes. Um, I'm using this brush to do some of the details. This brush to kind of do wide spaces and these big flat parts. I have a dry brush because I'm going to be doing a little bit of dry brushing. Uh, every good dry brush should look like a fuzzy uh, dust mop or something like that. Um, it's really fuzzy. And then I have this big terrain brush if I need it for whatever I'm doing. Um, also today, outside of the brushes, I have my ceramic tile. Uh, granted, sometimes I use a wet palette. But this is a ceramic tile. I use it in a lot of my videos. Um, it's gloss tile, ceramic tile. So I can wash paint right off of the surface. Of course, I have paper towels um, because, you know, we're going to be working with 
brushes and paint. And I uh, also have my clean water to be rinsing my brushes out. As far as paints today, um, I have these two for glass, like a green with then a, a, like a, this one I think is called marine teal. That's what I'm gonna do the glass with because I know this sounds silly, but there's some broken glass on this piece here. You can see that glass is intact. And then um, I'm gonna do a few things in metal pieces. So I've got this kind of dark middle. It's not the brightest, but it's also not the darkest metallic. I'm gonna use that. Um, I pick out this to do some hoses and other bits here and there on the pieces. And then I also have this wash that's called Storm Cloud, which is a bluish gray wash that I'll use on different pieces as we need it. Um, lastly, I have a couple of, and we've talked about these in other videos, um, I bought these, you know, pints of paint that came off the oops aisle at the hardware store. I'm going to use this for the actual, uh, the ter you know, this plate out here, the dirt part. I have a, a mustard yellow that will go as my middle color, and then I have this kind of off-white that will be my top coat. And that's just so this starts to look like, you know, it's painted just as well as the other stuff. And um, so that's everything that we're using today, and um, we'll get started here in just a second. And like I said, I, I know that not all of these techniques are what everybody uses. Uh, some people use you know, uh, airbrushes or other things. Um, I welcome, you know, any comments of things that you've done to paint big sections of terrain like this. Uh, this is just how I do it, and I hope it helps you out. Uh, one late addition is I forgot this sapphire blue. It's just a medium blue that I'm going to paint over the top of this darker color, the base coat. Um, so that'll be the color that I work with on these big flat panels. Um, and I'm just going to move this over here. So I got my palette. And um, I'm just going to add a little bit of this blue. It's really kind of goopy. Um, you know, sometimes these paints are okay and sometimes they're not. Um, that's what happens when you have a lot of different paints for different reasons is you don't always get back to them. I'm just going to mix a little water in there so that we get the right consistency that we're looking for. We want it to not be runny, but might not be too thick. And you can see I'm just using the end of the brush and swirling it um, so that we kind of get the consistency that we're looking for. That's looking a little bit better. Okay, so uh, let's get started with this piece here. I'm just going to brush over these big panels with this medium blue. And the medium blue is not the final place I'll be. I'll probably do something, you know, one coat or two coats over top of this. But uh, not really sure exactly where I'll go with this. If I'll go with a lighter blue or just an off-white as my next color. But if I do the off-white, it would completely just be a dry brush to catch the edges. Uh, we'll see how this looks when it dries. Because right now it's looking pretty purple, which is okay. Now, originally the Battle from a Crag had Tyranids and Space Marines and everything on the box showed red Tyranids and Ultramarines, you know, for uh, the Space Marines. But of course you can paint, you know, just like everything on Games Workshop, you can paint whatever you need to. All right, so uh, there's the base coat. This is with one layer of that medium blue. So I'm just gonna keep working that medium blue and I'm going to put a bigger blob this time of the color because I'm having to work it a little bit with the water. And uh, 
Well, I have to keep going back to it, but sometimes that happens. Alright, that's about the right consistency. You can kind of see that it flows, but it's not completely transparent. This one here, I can tell I needed to have worked some of those other colors in, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other pieces with um, this blue pretty quickly because what I need to do is be able to work back into those areas with the you know, like the red and the silver and stuff. I want to pick out some of those details with that. And I won't say that I'm the world's best painter. I've just been doing it a long time. Um, what I've found is the effort matters more than anything else. Um, having painted terrain looks a whole lot better than having unpainted terrain or having terrain that, uh, you know, has cardboard boxes or, you know, household items. Now, we've all played games like that, but as soon as you can afford a little bit of terrain, I'll show you so many techniques about how to do it. You make it out of household items so that you have cool looking terrain without breaking the bank. This kit, I'm sure if you bought it, would cost a little bit, even if you bought it uh, used, I just happened to stumble upon one and I thought it was a great opportunity. Alright, on to the next piece. I get inside here. This is not the best brush in the world, but it's good for trying. And the reason why I say it's not quite the best brush in the world is I can see a lot of like bubbles and thinness to the paint that wouldn't be happening. Granted, the paint is having a little bit of a struggle, you know, because it's older, but the brush is definitely not helping me. And it's good to have good quality brushes, and I do keep, when I'm painting miniatures, I always have very high quality brushes either from you know Kalinsky or you know something from Army Painter or Games Workshop or one of the big suppliers so that I'm getting a good quality brush. This one's just been wore out just a little bit. I can tell it is struggling. All right, that looks pretty good. Just looking at it from all angles here.
last piece here with the medium blue. And then we're going to go back in and do some other work. Okay, so I finished with all that medium blue. Just gonna wipe my palette here to clean that up just a little bit so I can go on with another color. Um, you can see this is why I'm using the ceramic tiles. I can just clean it up with a damp cloth. Granted, there is a blue haze on it now. <laughs> but, you know, when you're doing terrain and you're not having to be real particular like a miniature, you can just clean up like that really fast. All right, so I think what I'm going to do next while this is drying just a little bit is I'm actually going to go ahead and do this medium color for the brown, uh, you know, that is like the medium that I would put over top of the, uh, of the brown. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just put a little bit out here on the palette, and then I'm going to take a, I'm going to just show you the dry brush technique that I use is I put some out on the palette and then I'm gonna take this paper towel and I'm really gonna work at it to get a lot of it off so your brush looks like that. And then, see, I can go back into that first piece that we did and I'm just kinda of gonna go in circles. It's harder on a tight space, but I try to do a circles, uh, you know, with my brush to get a good even coat of this yellow on the rocks and stuff. And you can see there's a little bit of the blue bleeding over. So I'm gonna have to be careful here. What I'm gonna probably end up doing is getting out my dark brown and cleaning up these edges. And then anywhere there's a spot like that, I need to go in and do that. So let me do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause on that yellow. I know that seems silly, but I do need to pause on that yellow and then go back in to the dark brown on all of these pieces because having a good clean edge is really going to matter uh, with your terrain. So I'm going to just clean this up and then I'll get out that dark brown and we'll go with uh, etching up, you know, just cleaning up the edge on all that dark brown. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got out that dark brown that I'd used on the space. I have this one inch brush from Citadel that I'm going to use to clean up these edges. I'm just going to start with this piece. And really what it is, is you see this, oh, I got a little bit of water on there. Oh my goodness. All right. Anyway, you see this edge where the blue got over on it. I just need to clean up all of that stuff. And I'll probably use this brush to touch up anything that's like really small, because what I don't want to do is get back into the blue with the paint. So I'm just going to be really careful and try to just clean up this edge the best I can because a good clean edge will really make your terrain pop the right way. So I'm just gonna take my time and try to clean up that blue off of where the dirt and rocks would be and make that a good clean edge. And you can see this is a rock too right there. So I'm gonna just clean that up. Just takes a little bit of a steady hand. Um, if you brace your elbows on the table or your forearms on the table, you can take the time to uh, get a good clean edge. Uh, it's the only way to really do it. This little spot there, blue keeps showing through. All right, this is a trickier spot right here. I can see sand, you know, like where they've kicked up sand or whatever onto the top of the vehicle.
And some of this edges you're going to fix also with things like static grass and flocking so that you can kind of cover up, you know, other areas. You can hear my dog in the background, it's Peach. She is upset because the dogs across the street are playing without her. So, sorry Peach, we'll go play soon. She's very talkative. All right, we're making good progress on this edging.
Alrighty. That looks like it. Alright, so I am going to go change my water and clean my palette. Well, I don't need to change my water yet. I'll tell you why. It's because I'm going to do this dry brushing. <clears throat> Just a minute. I've got to let that all dry. And then I can do the dry brushing. Got to make sure my brush is good and dry. Alright, I'm going to give it just a minute and then we'll get back into painting that next thing.